Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms, and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to the Daily Red, your lunchtime catch-up on all things Liverpool FC on a Thursday with a couple of days to go before we play Chelsea at home in the Premier League. And of course, because it's Liverpool versus Chelsea, N'Golo Kante is back in training. He was not meant to return to playing for another six weeks. It's very unlikely he will play on Saturday, but you wouldn't put it past him. He just seems to have a fetish for playing against us. Reese James also back in training. Ben Chilwell back in training. Again, it would be a surprise if they risked either of them, considering Chilwell has been out now for a significant period of time. And they rushed Reese James back from the injury that cost him his place at the World Cup. And he got injured basically straight away. So it would be a big risk for Graham Potter, but then he doesn't have many options and his job Maybe under more pressure than we know. Who knows? Chelsea are a very strange club, so we'll have to wait and see. But they're getting fitter and there's no sign of our players coming back. Darwin should be back, but that's a a small injury. But no sign yet of Jota being back near the team. They're saying maybe for Real Madrid. Won't hold my breath on that one. Uh, Diaz still out for a while. Bobby... God knows where he is. If this doesn't, if this doesn't make the club firm in the decision not to extend Bobby, I don't know what will because it, clearly his form is irrelevant. Uh, on the main Liverpool websites, this is Anfield. Have a piece up entitled "Liverpool's Night of Stubbornness Offers Early Test of Jurgen Klopp's Loyalty." Without getting into it, I assume it's in reference to choices to be made in the midfield. Step in the right direction, but who starts in midfield versus Chelsea? Talked about this with Carl on Scouted. There's absolutely no reason for Jordan Henderson to take the field in this game. Fabinho and Besetic are two better options in the number six position. And in the right-sided role, Naby's a better option. I think Besetic is a better option. Curtis Jones is a better option. Harvey Elliott is a better option. And I would go as far as to say, right now, Ox and James Milner are better options. Given how he has played on and off the ball, they're both better options. While Liverpool have now avoided Casemiro-like suspensions, Liverpool don't have anybody on four yellow cards. Trent has three. Joe Gomez, Fabinho, Thiago and Luis Diaz have two. Harvey Elliott, Virgil, Costas, Henderson, Darwin, Matip and Jota all have one. It's always a little bit weird when a starting midfielder who plays regularly and is apparently in the team for his physicality only has one yellow card. And that was picked up in the last game he played in. There is the possibility that somebody accumulates 10 yellow cards across the season and gets a two-game ban, but it seems unlikely. Uh, with the shrinking violets in our team, it does seem quite unlikely. Our tour end, uh, could now end Liverpool loan deal early for return to Brazil. So there are reports that a number of clubs in Brazil are interested in signing him and bringing him home. I think that might be the best move for all parties, uh, certainly for us, 
because we're paying wages to a player who's played 14 minutes and Palmieri's are very much interested in signing him. I think this would be a good move for him to get himself back to Brazil and just try and reset his career because it hasn't gone to plan since coming to Europe. He started well at Barcelona, then lost his way, was involved in that weird swap deal where he went to Juventus and just never really settled in there. And obviously he's been injured since joining us on loan. If we could remove him and potentially go and add the midfielder that we need. Even if it's a loan at this point, I don't care. I've seen Frank Kessie's name mentioned a few times. I I would take Frank Kessie. He was outstanding for AC Milan. He offers a physicality that we currently lack. He's big, he's strong, he's 26, he's in his prime It's been a disaster since he went to Barca. That was always a strange move. He didn't fit at Barca. But if we could get him and put in a relatively low option to buy, 15, 20 million even, and he does well, if Jürgen gives him a chance, I think he can do well, then he could be an ideal addition in the summer. We need four midfielders in the summer. Now, I think we're more likely to end up with three. But because we're looking to sign Jude, and obviously the Nunes deal looks like it's pretty much in place. Kessie can play the six, can play the eight. It might, it might be the right move. It might be the right move. Speaking of Jude Bellingham... um. What's the fellow's name? At Pletty Goal? Yeah, at Pletty Goal on Twitter. Uh, he he has tweeted today about Liverpool's interest in Jude and how he's the top target and yada yada and all the stuff we already know. But uh, Florian Plettenberg, he says... If we could find it, that'd be a good thing. Oh, yeah, Liverpool bosses are still optimistic to sign him in the summer. Talks took place, but important to say he hasn't spoken personally to Klopp yet, and there is no official offer. Liverpool offers him the possibility to become the new Stephen Gerrard. I would bet all the money I have, which, you know, isn't a huge amount, but I would bet every penny I have that he has had multiple conversations with Jurgen Klopp. Multiple conversations. I was just laughing about about this with somebody on Twitter. Kloppo loves FaceTime. Imagine the big mad German head and him popping up on your phone. All excited because he's come up with some tactical idea that he wants to run by you. Imagine him calling you after a few beers. Imagine him calling Jude Bellingham and singing, Hey Jude. Jude, it's the Beatles. Very cool. It it would just be phenomenal to get a FaceTime from that lunatic. Um, So, yeah, there's something to brighten your mood. But there's no chance he hasn't spoken to Jude. Absolutely no chance. When will Liverpool's Anfield Road expansion be finished? So, obviously, this is Anfield have done a brilliant job at tracking the progress of the new stand. And they've had their drones up and taken a bunch of different pictures. Um. So the stand is to be finished and fully operational by the start of next season. And that will bring the capacity of Anfield to 61,015, which is is pretty sizable. You know, it is pretty sizable. Now, in an ideal world, they would next do Kenny, but obviously there's a lot of a lot of issues that come with that. Now they own a lot of the houses that are behind the stand, but the primary car park is also behind the Kenny. So they would need to they'd need to do some work there. But there's no real reason it couldn't happen. 
there's no real reason it couldn't happen. They could do the Kenny to mirror the main stand. That would start to look like an unbelievably cool stadium with a massive capacity. And then at some point you could maybe look at doing the cop. The way it logistically will be will be problematic as well. But if you could do something like what Dortmund have with that single tier, the yellow wall, that would be very, very cool. Especially now with safe standing in place. And by all accounts, it's been a great success. And hopefully they can expand the entire cop at some point to be a safe standing area. If they could do a one tier safe standing monstrosity of a stand, that would just, that would be the icing on the cake because realistically, Liverpool could sell out 75,000 every week. The waiting list for tickets is ridiculously long. And with, these expansions, once the Anfield Road is open and once the... So if they did the Kenny, then once they got to the cop, they might be able to come close to clearing. Not all of it, obviously, but a fair chunk of the waiting list. Liverpool.com, what have you got for us today? Uh, Liverpool still only has... Liverpool still really only has one problem. And Darwin Nunes is key to Jurgen Klopp fix. Unless he's going to play in midfield, he's not the key to the fix. Jurgen Klopp might have perfect Roberto Firmino successor who dreams of Liverpool transfer move. But that's a picture of Jesper, Jesper Lindstrom. Jesper Lindstrom is, is a really good player. A really, really good player who I would very much like us to sign. But... He's much more of a wide player than a Bobby type. If Liverpool decides to switch to Klopp's favourite Dortmund system, the 4-2-3-1, Lindstrom would be an ideal player in the number 10 role just behind the striker as well. No, he wouldn't. No, he just wouldn't. And especially not if you know what Klopp asked of the player in that number 10 role. It's not Lindstrom's role. Really good player. Would definitely take him. I would have taken him over Gakpo, personally. But it is what it is. Liverpool made to wait on Chelsea. Team news is three stars. That's what I mentioned earlier. Uh, Jurgen Klopp already has midfielder to bring in as elite, elite Liverpool winning percentage. Tempting. That has to be Naby. It has to be Naby because... Yeah, it is Naby. Liverpool's win percentage with Naby in the team is absolutely outrageous. Unlikely Liverpool midfielder just bossed Ruben Neves. Well, if we're being really honest, Ruben Neves played really well and wasn't bossed by anybody. Uh, Gary Neville, I can't be arsed with what Gary Neville has to say. Liverpool in talks to end Arthur loan. Let's see. Caicedo still a target. In talks to end Arthur loan. Keita included in swap deal. Well, there will be no swapping of Naby Keita at this point because his contract is up in the summer. Liverpool could use Keita as bait to sign Marcelo Brozovic. I mean, I, I like Marcelo Brozovic. I think he's a very good player. But the bottom line is that he is 30. And signing him would be immensely stupid at this point. On to AnfieldIndex.com, where we've got loads of new articles. Uh, the first thing that stands out to me is the article entitled Clock Presser Embargo, Something of Note by Dave Davis. Uh, the picture of Klopp in the coat reminds me of the picture of Wenger in the ever-expanding coat that got longer and longer and people took the piss out of it for years. Um, there are some definite parallels between Jürgen and 
Wenger, uh, but the coat needs to stop. Uh, there's a piece that I wrote entitled Jürgen, It's Time to Say Goodbye, which it appears that certain people didn't read it and just thought it was me saying Klopp needed to go. Uh, it doesn't say that at all. Who will go first, Klopp or FSG? This piece was written by Stephen Smith, so check that one out. Uh, thoughts on the Qatari takeover rumours, uh, written by David Davis. And lessons learned in the FA Cup win over Wolves, written by David Davis as well. So check those out. There's a new mole beyond the spot, which has been released today. There's a new scouted for Chelsea, which myself and Carol did yesterday. There's the new Pro Plus, myself and Grizz, having a chat about Brighton and Wolves and a bit of a look ahead to Chelsea. And there is a rival recon coming today, allegedly. So hopefully Harry has that in today and that can go up and you can get to listen to it because you know it'll be good. You know it'll be good. When, when Seti, you know, comes away from leading the hedonistic lifestyle that he does and actually does a bit of real work, uh, he does produce some good stuff. And that's it. That's all I have for today. So I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds and it means the world to the people who create these free shows.